I, Ben Bernanke, do solemnly swear. I, Ben Bernanke, do solemnly swear. That I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. That I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I take this obligation freely. That I take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. Without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. And that I will well and faithfully discharge. And I will well and faithfully discharge. The duties of the office on which I'm about to enter. The duties of the office upon which I'm about to enter. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you all for coming. I'm pleased to congratulate a distinguished economist and public servant, Ben Bernanke, on becoming the new chairman of the Council of Economic Advisors. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. I'm also honored to have uh, Ben's wife, Anna, and his two children, Alyssa and Joel, with us. Thank you all for coming. Ben has taught advanced economics at some of our nation's top universities for over two decades. And for nearly three years, he has done an outstanding job uh, as a member of the Federal Reserve Board of Governors. He's a talented visionary thinker. I look forward to his advice. I look forward to his counsel. And there's no doubt in my mind he will be an outstanding chairman of the CEA. Ben follows three others who've done a superb job as chairman of my Council of Economic Advisors. Harvey Rosen. There he is. <laughs> Greg Mankiw and Glenn Hubbard. I'm grateful to have had such able and dedicated counselors. I thank them for their service. I appreciate the director of the OMB and member of my cabinet who's joined us today, Josh Bolton. I want to thank my friend Al Hubbard, the director of the National Economic Council, with whom Ben will be working closely. I'm most grateful, and I know Ben is as well, is that the chairman of the Federal Reserve, Mr. Alan Greenspan, has joined us today. Welcome. As well as Roger Ferguson, the vice chairman of the Fed. I appreciate you all coming. I want to thank uh, Ned Gramlich, a governor of the Federal Reserve, Susan Byes, a governor of the Federal Reserves. I want to thank the staff of the Council of Economic Advisors who have joined us today. You're fixing to work for a good man. Ben will lead the CEA in an important time for our economy. Today, Americans have many reasons to be optimistic about our economic future. After all, our economy is growing faster than, it, than that of any other major industrialized nation. Over the last two years, we've added more than 3.5 million new jobs. The unemployment rate is down to 5.1 percent. That is uh, lower than the average rate of the 1970s, the 1980s, and the 1990s. More Americans are working today than ever before. Small businesses are flourishing. Families are taking home more of what they earn. And more people own their own homes than ever before. We've got to build on these achievements to make sure we have lasting pro uh, prosperity in America. I look forward to Ben's advice as we continue to advance a pro-growth, pro-jobs agenda by making our economy more flexible, more innovative and more competitive will keep America the economic leader of the world. Our agenda for a stronger economy begins with allowing families to keep more of the money they earned. To get the economy going again after the September the 11th attacks, we enacted the largest tax relief in a generation. In order to make sure that that uh, tax relief continues to work on behalf of entrepreneurs and small businesses and families, Congress needs to make that tax relief permanent. We also need a reform tax code that is simple and fair and easy to understand. I'm looking forward to Ben's advice on the definition of a good reform tax code. To keep our America the economic leader of the world, we must recognize that the money we spend belongs to the taxpayers, not to the government. We'll insist on a budget that tames the spending appetite of the federal government and stays on track to cut the deficit in half by 2009. To keep America the economic leader of the world, we must free our small businesses from needless regulations and protect honest job creators from junk lawsuits. Congress needs to pass the asbestos liability bill now. And this year, we also need to pass medical liability. 
to keep uh, health care more affordable and accessible, we got to work to pass association health plans and continue to expand health savings accounts. To ensure America's future for prosperity, we'll continue to insist upon high results and measuring uh, achievements so that every child can learn to read and write and add and subtract. To keep America the economic leader of the world, we will strengthen the institutions that underpin our society. Americans need to know that if they work hard their whole lives, they'll be able to retire with confidence and peace of mind. So we're working to save Social Security for a younger generation of workers. We want to make sure the next generation of retirees will be as secure in their retirement as today's retirees. Americans will require a reliable and affordable energy supply if we want to be the leader of the world. And so that's why I proposed a comprehensive energy policy four years ago to reduce our dependence upon foreign oil. Now is the time for the United States Congress to get an energy bill on my desk that will allow us to diversify away from uh, the hydrocarbon society in which we live. In this new century, American prosperity will increasingly depend on our ability to sell our goods and services overseas. We need to pass CAFTA, the Central American Dominican Republic Free Trade Agreement, to show the world our commitment to free and fair trade and to stand squarely with those young democracies in our own hemisphere. A vibrant economy requires a strong and confident economic leadership, and I'm happy to have Ben's experience. I want to thank Ben for agreeing to serve at an important time for our economy, and I look forward to his wise counsel. Congratulations. Thanks, sir. Thank you. I'd like to thank the President for the confidence he's shown in me in allowing me to lead as Council of Economic Advisors. Uh, America ho faces a host of economic challenges, some of which the President has just outlined. This administration is addressing those challenges with vision and courage. As Chairman of the Council, I'll do everything I can to help develop policies that will strengthen the American economy. Several of my Federal Reserve colleagues are in attendance, including Chairman Greenspan. I'd like to thank them for nearly three years of collegiality and friendship. My time at the Fed was a wonderful experience that I'll never forget. Many staff members of the Council of Economic Advisors are also here. I'd like to thank you all for the service you've already provided to your country, and I look forward to working with each one of you. And finally, I would like to thank my family in attendance, especially my wife, Anna, my son, Joel, and my daughter, Alyssa, whose birthday is today, 19. Hey. Uh, <laughs> off on a happy birthday for me. <laughs> They've supported me through the ups and downs of public service, and I'm very grateful for that support. And I hope they'll bear with me for just a few more years. Thank you all very, very much for coming. Thank you. Good job, Ben. Thank Thanks for coming.